everyone, it's Justin again. So far in this unit, you have learned to solve all kinds of equations. But equations don't always have one nice solution. In today's lesson, we'll be looking at some equations that are a little bit different. In order to get ready for this video, there is a GeoGebra activity in your PDF. If you haven't done so already, open up the Visualizing Solutions activity in your PDF and spend some time exploring the GeoGebra to answer the questions in the activity. Make sure to complete both pages so you don't miss something important. Pause the video here and come back when you finish the activity. We'll talk about these equations and what they mean as we go through this lesson. Before today, all of the equations we looked at so far in this course had one solution. Having one solution means that there is one single value that we can substitute for the variable that makes the equation true. Like we've been doing all unit, we get that one single solution by isolating the variable, and we can recognize the solution because it looks like the variable equals some number. But sometimes, weird things happen when we try to isolate the variable. For example, some equations have infinitely many solutions, which makes them look different. When an equation has infinitely many solutions, it means that you can put any real number into the equation and it will make the equation true. Let's take equation number two from the GeoGebra activity. Seven plus two X equals three plus two X plus four. This equation has infinitely many solutions. Pick a number, any number, and try substituting it for x to see what happens. Go ahead and pause the video here to try it yourself now. I picked my favorite number, which is 3.2. I substituted it on both sides and simplified. And I got 13.4 equals 13.4, which is true. Now, I bet you picked a different number, so your simplified equation probably doesn't match mine, but it should be equal on both sides. Like maybe 7 equals 7, or 11 equals 11, or 17 equals 17. We say that an equation like this has infinitely many solutions because there are infinitely many numbers that you can put in for x and have the equation be true. But what's actually happening here? Well, each side of this equation is made up of constants and variables. In the GeoGebra, you saw them represented like this. But if we do a little rearranging here to put all of the constants together at the front and all of the variables together at the end, we can see what's happening here a little better. Notice how in our visual representation, these two expressions line up perfectly. The constants are exactly the same since 3 plus 4 is the same as 7. And the variables are exactly the same because there are two x's in each expression. It doesn't matter what value we put in for this variable, no matter how big or how small. Since there are the same amount of x's in each expression, they will always be equal to each other. So how do you think we can recognize when an equation has infinitely many solutions, like this one, without having to draw out a picture? Well, we can also think about this from the perspective of solving. There are variables on both sides of this equation, so we would want to bring them together by subtracting 2x from both sides. But check this out. Since the variable terms match, they just cancel right out on both sides and leave us with 7 equals 3 plus 4. Since what we're left with here is a true statement, it means that no matter what value we put for x, this equation will still be true. It's just like how it's true that 7 equals 3 plus 4. So there are infinitely many solutions. What do you think would happen if the variables cancel each other out, but the constants that are left are not equal? That would be an equation with no solution, which is the last possible outcome for an equation. When an equation has no solution, it means that there is no number that you can substitute for the variable to make the equation true. An equation that has no solution 
will also have the same amount of variables on both sides. Like we see in equation number three from the GeoGebra, x plus three plus x equals seven plus two x. There are two x's on each side. The difference here is that the constants do not match. We can see this by representing the expressions on each side visually and rearranging them to match up the constant boxes and the variable boxes. See how the variables match up, but the constants do not? Now you don't have to represent your expressions visually. We can also see this when we try to solve the equation. Pause the video here and try to solve this equation on your own. What happened? You probably simplified the left side and then subtracted 2x from both sides. Since the variables match on both sides, they will all cancel out, leaving 3 equals 7. Uh-oh, that's not true. What's happening here is that no matter what number I put in for the x, the two x's on the left will always match the two x's on the right. But no matter what we do, we can't make the 3 on the left equal to the 7 on the right. So there is no solution to this equation. Let's put all of that new information together and summarize it so that we can put it to good use. In this lesson, we are talking about three possible numbers of solutions for equations. Those three outcomes are one solution, infinitely many solutions, or no solution. If you try to solve an equation, what will it look like to signal to you that it has one solution, infinitely many solutions, or no solution? One solution is what we've been dealing with all along, so we know what that looks like. Your variable equals some number. What will these two new scenarios look like? Pause the video here and try to fill in these last two rows now. In both of these two new scenarios, all of the variables will always cancel each other out. If an equation has infinitely many solutions, then you will be left with a true statement, like negative three equals negative three. If an equation has no solution, then you'll be left with an untrue statement, like five equals one. So what can we do with this new knowledge? Well, when we fully simplify both sides of an equation, we can pause to check if there are the same number of the variable on each side and if the constants on each side match. Let's try an example. Our example problem says to match each equation to its number of solutions. There may be more than one equation in some categories. Remember, you can tell if an equation has one solution, infinitely many solutions, or no solution based on checking to see if the variables match on each side and then checking to see if the constants match. Pause the video here and give this one a try on your own. I'll go through these one equation at a time, starting with A. This equation is nice because it's already fully simplified. I can see here that I have the same amount of variables on both sides, 5A. But the constants do not match. One side has nine, and one has three. I think that means this will have no solution, but let's try canceling the variables to double check. If I subtract 5a from both sides, I'm left with nine equals three. That is not true, and ending up with an untrue statement means this equation has no solution. I'm gonna clear this out so we can look at b next. Looking at b, it looks like both sides match up perfectly, so I'm thinking this is going to have infinitely many solutions. But I'll go ahead and try solving just to be sure. So I'm going to cancel that 3v by subtracting 3v on both sides. Oh, I was wrong. I didn't know that the 3v on the left is positive, but the 3v on the right is negative. So they don't actually match or cancel each other out. Instead, now I have 6 equals 6 minus 6v. Now I can isolate my variable to see that v is 0. 0 is a number, so this has one solution. 
One more to go. C is not already simplified, so I definitely want to start there so I can see what the variables and constants are on each side. Ah, uh, that's better. I see I have 4n on both sides, and they are both positive. So my variables match. What about my constants? Yep, I have 8 on each side. I'm going to predict that, that means this equation has infinitely many solutions, but let's solve just to make sure. I'll subtract 4n on both sides, which cancels all of my variables and leaves me with 8 equals 8. That is a true statement, and ending with a true statement means that this equation does have infinitely many solutions. When it comes to determining how many solutions an equation has, it's important to simplify everything so that you can compare the variable terms and the constant terms on each side of the equation. You may be able to tell how many solutions it has from the start, but as you saw with me, it's always a good idea to fully solve it to make sure that you're not missing anything important, like a negative sign. By now, if you haven't already, make sure that you finish up the GeoGebra activity and your guided notes in your PDF. Then you can move on to the practice game. Good luck, and I'll see you next time!